Thank you for tuning into or watching the Choice, Change and Action podcast. My name is Simone Millicis and I am your host. Your choice creates your future. Every choice you make, action you take, you create a change for you and the world. Please enjoy this podcast. Don't take it too seriously. Don't take me too seriously. Don't trust me. Trust you. You are the one that knows what will work for you. And have way too much fun enjoying your choices. Hey everyone, so I just did this podcast. I am in Cairo, Egypt. Oh yeah, look, there we go. I thought that was a much better view. This is literally the view. This is my balcony. That's my balcony. The view from my room at the Marriott Mina House. That's the Great Pyramid. Uh, I have a private tour there tomorrow with some friends and uh, a private tour of the Sphinx. And I just recorded a podcast in my room here. I um, might not show you. I think it's funny because you know what? That was my desk. <laughs> you always get really creative of when you're, you know, somewhere different. And what have you got to use? Oh, box of water. Perfect, perfect as a table. Anyway, I spoke about projections and expectations. So if we didn't have those projections and expectations, there'd be no judgment. There'd be no rejections of you, with you. There'd be no separation. We'd have what I like to refer to as you know, living in a world that is way more, way more awareness and oneness because you in truth are oneness with everything. So and can I just say being here in Egypt, Cairo, I'm going to show you the pyramid, not me. Do you know what it was like sleeping here last night? Freaking incredible. I slept nine hours. I think I needed to sleep with my door, you know, slightly open. So this cool breeze coming in and that. That pyramid, man, it had my back. It has this energy of, I got you. I got you. So anyway, enjoy the podcast and I'll see you somewhere in the world. Thanks. Bye. Hello, everybody from Cairo, Egypt. Uh, welcome to Choice, Change and Action. I am your host, Samoy Melissus, and I am. you have me solo today. Well, you actually don't have me solo. I'm going to show you at the end where I am. I've got to tell you, <laughs> I've got the, the Great Pyramid right in front of me. It's outside. Like as I'm looking, if you're watching me, as I'm looking to my left, that's the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's just friggin' incredible. So I'm in Cairo, Egypt, and I'm here. Uh, I'll be facilitating a choice for possibilities class and then off to Dubai for a business done different class. And it's my first time in Egypt in this lifetime, and it's incredible. It's been I mean, gosh, this place has like, uh, what, 150 million people in Egypt and it doesn't really have that sense. Like I was staying in a hotel that was right sort of more closer to old Cairo and downtown and it was nightclub city. I was there for two nights and between, oof, I think 10 p.m. and 4 a.m., it was just music you could hear at the nightclubs all around there. That's not my scene anymore. You know, I would have loved that years and years ago. I did it years and years ago, and now that's not really what I'm interested in. Not to say that I don't like dancing and going to a club, but it's not what I want to do every night. And I haven't been to a club in ages, just for the record. Uh, desert. Love the desert. I honestly, I just, well, I freaking love our earth and I love this planet. And I think the desert has so much to offer. If you haven't been to a desert, you should literally get your butt to a desert somewhere in the world. It's, they're incredible. It's the power and potency of these places is just like, wow. So my first impressions of the Great Pyramid, this is not what I started this podcast to talk about, but I got to talk about it is the sense of peace, the sense of relaxation, this like strength. Um, I honestly have the sense that something has my back is probably a really good way to say it. Um, there's nine pyramids. I'm seeing more of them tomorrow. And the Great Pyramid, they all have such a different energy. And the Great Pyramid is, oh gosh, there's so many things out there, you know, of what they say it's for. You know, originally they were saying it's a tomb. It's, I don't think it's a tomb. I think it's something completely different. And I, I don't know a lot of people have that point of view as well. 
I am actually doing a private tour of it tomorrow and a private tour of the Sphinx, which will be amazing with some friends of mine. Uh, but, you know, I slept nine hours last night and I, I slept with my doors open, the screen shut and just this cool breeze coming in. And like I said, I honestly had this sense that I had something had my back was just protecting me and looking after me. And I'm going with that. I'm going with that, no matter what anybody else says. And I guess that's that's probably leads me into the topic that I wanted to talk to about today as well is... Well, you know, I've been looking at a lot of my life, like just questioning everything. Uh, you know, if you've been listening to my podcast, you'll know that, you know, towards the end of October, to October last year, I um, hurt my back and ended up in hospital and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't really want to make it significant. The, the piece that I do want to have a look at, though, is how much it made me pivot in my life. And it made me pivot in the way of, really questioning everything it's like what you know from from movement to 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 work to um my association with everything and everyone um you know my body was really like hey we need to we need to relax we need to really look at not forcing anything into play and um, that includes everything that includes the way i move my body um you know, food, it's like um, drink, all of that. It's like, and really asking, okay, so what next? What is there? Um, I was so good at just traveling around the world and just doing class after class after class and, you know, talking to people and saying yes to every media and podcast and all of that. And now I'm like, okay, is this actually going to create something greater? Like by me, you know, <laughs> forcing everything into action and I get no. So I am look like really being in question. Everything I took for granted, it's like, okay, so if I was asking a question here, will this actually create greater? Will this, does this match the energy of what it is that I'm looking for in the world? And for me, I'm asking for more consciousness on the planet, for people to wake up, to be more aware. And man, there is a lot of really cool people on the planet who are waking up and you know, some podcasts and things I've been listening to or interviews I've been on, people are like, now is the friggin' time. And I'm like, fuck yes, now is the time. It's so friggin' cool. And I'm so grateful for so many people around the world. Like, just thank you. If you know you're one of them, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are, you know, choosing something different, choosing something greater, choosing something more, you are one of them. You know, and if we come out of judgment, because judgment is definitely a killer, you know, there is not a separation between us except judgment creates a separation. Judgment creates a separation. That really does. Judgment creates a separation between, you know, I don't know, man, woman, like whatever we desire to call ourselves, etc. cetera, um, the color of our skin, the shape of our eyes, the amount of money you have or don't have in your bank account. Um, are you in a relationship or not in a relationship? You know, do you have kids or not have kids? Um you know, are you fit or not fit or, you know, all these different things is the separation is created from judgment. So where does that begin? Well, a lot of that I see begins on these expectations and projections that you have of you, that you have of others, etc. So that's actually what I wanted to talk about was the projections, the expectations and the judgments, which lead to what? Leads to separation of you with somebody, you with yourself, you with your body, you with money, etc., and creates this rejection of what's actually possible. Because if we could, we could receive everything, we can receive everything. You know, in Access Consciousness, we talk about you as an infinite being, you as an infinite being. Just sit with that for a moment. You as an infinite being, not a finite being, like not like, oh, Dios mío, oh my goodness, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, I doubt, I fear, I blah, 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 bullshit. You are an infinite being. The only thing stopping you from choosing to function as an infinite being is you. And a lot of the times it's your judgments, it's your projections, it's your expectations that you have a view of others, business, money, whatever it is, you know. And I'll run through a few things and give you some examples here as well. So. Someone was asking me recently, like, what is an expectation and what is a projection? So I thought it would be fun just to actually Google that because I can give you a description, but let's go with this for a second. 
So expectation, right? It says an expectation is a belief about what might happen in the future, like your expectation to stay close with your best friends your whole life. And I think that's pretty, it's a pretty good description as well. Um, and it says your expectations are your strong hopes or beliefs that something will happen or that you will get something that you want. But it also works the other way as well. Like let's use money as an example. So if you have an expectation that you'll never have money, like you just like, oh, I'll never have money. I'm going to lose money. I'm not good with money. You know, whatever it is, that's what you're going to create. Because let's stop for a second and look at how powerful and potent you are. Every single thing that you have in your life right now is there because you created it. You chose it. You created it. That's just the way it works. So if you have the expectation that you are going to have no money, that you're never going to get a good job or that you're not going to get paid enough or whatever, because I'm using money as an example, you will create that, okay? If you have no expectation, like even just look at the energy of that. So all the expectations that you have around money, notice how it's like it's got this like, ah, this weird ass energy that it is it even yours. So all the expectations you have around money where you destroy and uncreate it. Times a godzillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, proverbs, and beyonds. That's the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement. You can find out more at theclearingstatement.com. Basically just pressing the delete button for everything. Now I want you to look at money and go, okay, I have no expectations. I have no expectations of money. What can I receive today with money beyond expecting anything? Notice how there's like, I mean, for me, it's like more of a sense of peace. There's, um, there's no definition to it and it doesn't have this uh, like the molecule sort of tightening up and constricting. It's got more of this sense of like, <sighs> okay, so if I have no expectations of money, no expectations of looking, you know, in my bank account or how much I'm going to get paid or anything like that, what could show up? What could show up beyond anything you could ever imagine? Our imagination is usually only functioning from the expectations and the projections and the judgments of what we've been and done before. Another piece of information there. So everything at that is times a godzillion we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Now let's look at what is projection. So it says here in the dictionary or on Google, Projection is a type of defense mechanism or means of coping. I think that was brilliant. People may use defense mechanisms and unconscious mental strategies to cope with stressful or anxiety-provoking thoughts and experiences. So when someone unconsciously attributes their thoughts, feelings, or behaviors to another person, they are projecting. And, okay, simple definition of projection. It says projection has various meanings. But what they all have in common is that something is sent out or forward, okay? So something is sent out or forward. So let's come off money and let's actually, let's look at relationships. So if you have a projection of someone in relationship. So now if you have a partner, think of that partner. If you have a kid, you know, you all have a mother or father. So think of somebody that you consider yourself close to. Okay, now I want you to have a look at, and you don't have to tell anyone, I'm not going to be like, hey, that's bad, that's terrible, that's wrong. It's not about judgment. It's about getting aware and it's about having some clarity. So I want you to put your attention on this person. How many projections do you have of that person? Holy shit. I always find it so interesting when I do a pre-record of a podcast and you can perceive the energy. Everything at that is times a gazillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, proverbs, and beyonds. Wow. I'm going to ask that again because how many layers of projections, past, present, and future, do you have of this person? Everything at that is times a gazillion where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, proverbs, and beyonds. Now put your attention on that same person. You destroy and uncreate all the projections and it may take a few times and something else will come up like tomorrow, the next day, etc. Just pop and pot it. Now, but I just want you to indulge in putting your attention on that person and having no projections. 
no projections. What could show up? Notice how when you have no projections, there's also no expectations. So if you have no projections and no expectations, guess what? You have no judgments. So everything that that is, and everywhere that you have decided that projections and expectations and judgments are more valid and real and true to you than destroying and uncreating that and just having that space. We destroy and uncreate it, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine, shorts, boys, privates and beyonds. Wow, how does it get any better than this? So let's look at business. What expectations do you have of your business? And just, just make a note. Like, I mean, even pause this podcast for now and write down five things. What's five things that you have as an expectation of your business? What if you didn't have those as an expectation? And I can guarantee you one of them is to make me money, you know. Okay. Well, how does money, like how does money react to that? Because if you have this expectation that it's like, this business has to make me money, this business has to make me money, this business has to make me money, it's like, is there much joy in that? Is there much fun in that? For me, I've really noticed that when I'm choosing something that's joyful for me and it's fun for me, money starts to show up. And it shows up in the most random of ways too. Money is not linear. It doesn't function from linearity. So if you have no expectations of your business, and no projections. Now, let me just do a little caveat here. If you're in business and you have, you know, maybe you're going for a loan or you've got investment, you know, investors coming in or something like that, or it could even be um, renewing a lease or anything, they will ask a lot of the times for projections. Do it or hire someone to do it. For me, it's really limiting because if I look at the projections and I go, okay, I have this projection that X, Y, Z is going to show up, then most of the time people focus so much on that that they don't allow anything different or anything greater to show up. They get very pleased when they either just meet their projections or they might undervalue what can show up. So if you need to do it, do it. And then cast your eyes over the projections that you have and pock and pod everything that that is and everything that doesn't allow something even greater to show up, okay? Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pod all nine, shorts, boys, provids and beyonds. And this is sort of, it's a slippery slope and all I can talk to too is the way I work. I love numbers. I really like looking at numbers. So, for example, I'm in Cairo, Egypt. I've got Choice for Possibilities class coming up. I just knew I had to come to Egypt as well. So we have this class live and we have it online as well. Same thing as the business done different class in Dubai. There's a certain amount of cost involved, you know, my flights, venues, um, you know, staff, blah, 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 hotels, all that sort of stuff that's involved. Okay. So that's, I love getting the figure of what that is. And then looking at like, okay, so how many people are coming to class? How many people are coming live to class? How many people are coming online to class? And I never figure that out. Like, oh, this is going to calculate to this and calculate to this. But energetically, you go, oh, yeah, this will work. And it's like, and what else is possible? Okay, yeah, this will work. And what else is possible? And what else is possible? And there comes this moment as well that I make this demand in my world that I go, I'm going, no matter what it is. And I've done that over the years. Even some classes I've gone to or places I've traveled to, I have, you know, quote, unquote, lost money. But I knew it was creating a future. I knew it was creating a future. And I can tell you, being here in Egypt and in the Middle East just makes me smile because it's, it's so creating a future and it's so creating something different. And again, it matches the energy of what it is that I personally would like to create in the world. Look, I met Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, 22 years ago. Dr. Dane here, I met a couple, about a month after him uh, and the co-creator of Access Consciousness. And when I met them, I was like, holy shit, these guys are talking about everything that I knew was possible. You know, I just had this concept where I wanted to like shake people by the shoulders, I always say, and go, don't you see that there's something different? There's something different than this. And these guys had these tools and they had, you know, the, the clearing statement, that alone is friggin' gold, okay? If you haven't checked it out, check it out. The clearing statement, being in question, 
I mean, it's the Socratic method, right? Socrates, he always talked about being in question. And I always loved Socrates and how he talked about being in question. It wasn't take anything at face value. I, mean, I always find it interesting when history or, you know, historians or whoever it is sort of go, okay, so now we've found the answer, we've concluded this, stop, and they stop looking. Like I think it was 1957 and the Australian um, office of, the Peyton office shut down. You know why? Because colour TV had been invented. And they, some dude in the Peyton office literally said, colour TV has been invented, there's nothing else to invent, let's shut it down. Like, hello, they shut it down for six months and then they opened it back up again. Everything is possible. There is always more possible, always more, always more, always more, always more. Now, here's the thing. How many of you have a judgment that when you ask for more, that it's been greedy? Will you please destroy and uncreate that judgment? Everything that separates you and rejects you from the infinite possibilities and the greatness and the joy and the fun and the adventures of living here on this planet, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pot all nine, shorts, boys, privates and beyonds. So projections, expectations of your business, how many do you have? So how many projections and expectations are you using to create the business that you want that the business that you are to create the business that you are not choosing now what the hell does that mean well how many of you are limiting the business that you're currently choosing so that you can maintain normality you can be the same as everybody else maybe you break even maybe you make enough just to pay the bills what if there was something so much more than that so everything at that is times a godzillion we destroy and uncreate it Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, povids and meons. Hmm. Wow. So the other thing is too with projections, expectations, judgments, separations and rejections, when you function from that, you actually allow other people or other things to control you. Let's go back to money. Okay, so if you have an expectation, a projection, a judgment of money, guess what you're going to do? You're going to allow money to control you. How does that work? You are the source of creation, not money. So every single time you go to, oh, well, I can't do that because I don't have money. Who's in control? Money. Money's in control, okay? No, I don't mean that you just need to go, yes, I'm going to do everything now because I'm not letting money control me. No, don't be an idiot. Like, like I said, I like working with numbers. I like seeing the numbers. I don't choose based on numbers. I have cancelled things here and there, but most of the time I will not choose based on that. I just like the clarity of it. But they don't use that as this sole purpose for choosing. I choose based on the energy. I choose based on, yep, I'm going. Yes, I'm choosing this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, you know, Joy of Business, the first book I wrote, I think it's in like, 16, 17 languages now, and we're doing Audible a lot in a lot of different languages as well. It costs a small fortune to do all of that. And I never look at that and go, what is the money that's coming back to me with that? I wrote that book many, many years ago. It has opened up so many doors for people. If you haven't read it, check it out, Joy of Business. It's opened up many, many doors for people. And I've had such cool feedback over the years. And I'm so grateful for anyone who's reached out to me in the various ways that you have. And in, in showing me your books or dog-eared or post-it notes or underlining or highlighting, etc., that just, again, matches the energy of what I desired to create in the world. It was like, let's empower people to know that there is a different possibility that, yeah, you, you, what, what you're looking at, what you're thinking about each day, what you are dreaming about, you can friggin' create it. You can choose it. If you destroy and uncreate all the projections and the expectations and the judgments and the separations and the rejections, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys, privates and beyonds, then what else is beyond that? Now, I didn't create that book to, quote, unquote, make money. Has it, has it created money for me in some way? Absolutely. It's like my book is out there in all these different languages. People come to classes all the time. It's translated. You know, I have people showing up to classes that it's, um, you know, that are translated in different languages. There are joy business facilitators all over the world. It has kept expanding and expanding and expanding. 
Now, if I had done a profit and loss sheet with it, woof, that would take me quite a while over all those different years. But energetically, I look at it and go, has it created, you know, has it contributed to my business? Absolutely. Did I expect it to? No. Did I have projections that it would? Hmm. I get a little bit of a yes with that one. So maybe I had a projection that it would. Um, oh, do you know what I just realized with that? I think the projection I had with that too was that maybe I could, you know, have that book out there and I didn't have to talk to as many people. Believe it or not, it's like I know I meet many people all the time and, and I adore so many of the people I get to meet. It's just, you know, so incredible. I'm really lucky and I do really well on my own as well. I like I like having my own space. So having that book out there has also been another way that I could have this tool that they can buy a book, they don't actually have to come to a class and they can start to change their business, change their life, you know, change the way they're looking at things. So, so right now I'll destroy and create all of the projections and expectations and judgments that I have of the book, Joy Business, of writing a book, of what it means to write a book, of what it means to get it out there, of, you know, what people's points of view of it are and everything that that is times a godzillion. I'm writing on good and bad, pock and pot all nine shorts, boys, proverbs, and beyonds. So how many projections and expectations are you trying to fulfill of others? That could we could swing back into the relationship side with that. How many are you trying to fulfill of others? What if you and the interesting thing is they're not even asking you to do that. Some are, but you know, it's like you're trying to fulfill someone's projections and expectations rather than choose for you. That's a little insane, right? So everything that that is, time to go, tell him we destroy and uncreate it. We're right and on good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Now let's look at um, in the workplace and staff, okay? Do you have projections and expectations of the staff, of people you work with? I've definitely done that over the years and it never creates anything greater. If anything, it creates like a, well, it creates a separation. Here we go again. It's called, we nicknamed it Pez Juniors, okay? And there's a book out um, that Gary Douglas and Dane here wrote. We'll put it in the show notes as well. I highly recommend getting that because it goes really into depth on projections, expectations, judgments, rejections, and separations and how they sort of interweave and, and it all works together. It's brilliant. So if you look at staff, and like I said, over the years, I have had projections of people, um, of staff that I've worked with, and the only thing it ever ends up doing is creating a frustration for myself. So even just recently, I redid it. Every person I work with, I went through and was like, okay, I pock and pot all the projections and expectations I have of this person, of this project. And it's not like there's an answer at the end of that because there's not. There's a space. And from that space... For me, the way it, 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 you know, I get this sense is I have a bigger choice. I have a bigger, you know, there's a bigger buffet. There's a bigger, a bigger universe. There's more stars in the sky. There's more, you know, there's just more possibilities available when I'm not functioning from projections and expectations of anyone or a project, et cetera. So, and to me, that's one of the best qualities you can be as a leader is to empower people to be what they are, to choose what they want to choose, <laughs> to choose what they desire to choose. And to like acknowledge that, and I want to say like cherish that, it's like it's okay. It's like if you don't expect, you know, not everyone's going to choose what you're choosing and what you're choosing might not necessarily be, you know, a great expansive choice for somebody else. So right now with your business, what if you destroyed and uncreated all the expectations and projections you have of every single person you work with, every project, everything at that is times a godzillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Now, again, I always find it interesting. I'm pre-recording and I had this like, you know, money. How many of you just went to money then? Oh, but I've got to have this amount of money. I've got to do that. Will you destroy and uncreate your relationship with money? I mean, what's going to, if you lost everything, what would you choose tomorrow? You might freak out momentarily, but would you always choose something more? Would you always choose something greater? I know I would always choose whatever matches the energy of what I would like to create in the world. And I have had that 
whatever you want to call it, target, goal, vision, desire, you know, all of that and more. I've had that since I was about, I think about 16, 17, where I just looked out at the world and went, seriously, this can't be it. There's got to be something different. There's got to be something greater than this. And I guess one of the um, things I've looked at periodically, and I'm going to say more so recently, is the earth is like my best mate, you know. And if you are ever out there and you, you know, have that sense that you're alone, tap into the energy of the earth. It's incredible. It has your back. It's like, go. I mean, seriously, go hug a tree. Go put your, take your shoes off and, and, and put your feet in the dirt, in the grass, in the sand, in the mud, whatever it is, in the snow, could be anything. And just ask to pull that beautiful, amazing, creative energy up through your feet into your body. What do you sense? If you do that right now, what do you sense? What can you be? What can you choose? Like stop making this reality so friggin' significant and start choosing what works for you with no projections, no expectations, no judgments. So let's finish this podcast off with this. Will you destroy and uncreate? Well, what projections do you have of you today? That has a weird energy. Everything at that is times a gazillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. What expectations do you have of you today? Wow. Everything at that is times a gazillion, we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. You know, the interesting thing is it just popped up for me with this too is, you know, I've been, I've been having a podcast now for quite some time and Sometimes it was like, oh, I've got to do a show, I've got to do a show, I've got to do this, you know, and there was an expectation, a projection of something. And I have recently just gone, you know what, if I don't record a show, I don't record a show. <laughs> and I'm finding that that I have these ideas or, you know, something is showing up with so much more ease because I have no projections and expectation. It's like, okay, the podcast doesn't have to exist, you know. It's, I, I do this podcast because it's also fun for me and it's a way, oh yeah, matches the energy of getting access consciousness tools out there of like flicking, you know, just flicking that, that one person or the 100 people or 1,000 people or whatever it is and just going, hey, you got this, okay, you got this. That's for me what it's so much of this is about. What judgment do you have of you today? Everything at that is times a godzilla where you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, probits and beyonds. Now, if you look at the energy of that, the expectations, the projections and the judgments that you, you've had, how much of that is designed and chosen so that you separate and you get rejected? You get rejected from others. You reject yourself from you. Uh, and it creates a separation from you with all the possibilities, all the possibilities, those trillions and trillions and trillions of molecules that are around the, the on the earth, people, everything that is available. It's like that, ah, all, all the possibilities that you can perceive and everywhere that you've been trying diligently so hard to reject all of that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs and beyonds. Oh, yeah, take a big breath. And hey, thanks for joining me here today. Like truly, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for being here. Like I'm really grateful. Um, if you are watching this on Spotify or, or YouTube or anything like that, um, I'm going to quickly show you where I am because that, see it, oh. Hang on, I'm going to go over here a little bit. That's the Great Pyramid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to film a little something for you guys so you can check out on Instagram uh, when this comes out, okay? So it'll it'll be on my Instagram. So don't forget to follow me on the Choice Change in Action uh, Instagram as well. So, okay, that's it for me, folks. Love you. Mwah. Big kisses, big hugs. Thanks for being here. Well, did you like this podcast? Love it? Hate it? Inspired by it? Can you do me a favor? Can you please write a comment, share it, like it? If you are listening on Spotify or Apple, could you tick a few stars for us, leave a review, 
It's all such a contribution and I am immensely grateful. Follow us on Instagram at Choice Change in Action and drop into our DMs and let us know what you would like next. When you subscribe to the show notes, you will receive a brief summary and any questions or tools we used and links to anything we discussed during the show. It might make your life easier. What if we asked for that? A life of ease, joy and glory.